Hi. So in this segment, we're going to discuss a few problems. Many of you may have had the opportunity to look at fish swimming and you are welcome to do a quick internet search because that will tell you what the typical flapping wings, flapping nature of fish caudal fins are, how they move. So we're going to ask the question that if a fish is swimming at one centimeter per second by flapping its caudal tail fin, so by caudal tail I mean caudal fin, I mean this on my drawing. This is the caudal tail. Right? In such a case, if it is moved from water to a viscous solution like honey, will it still be able to move? This is the first question. And depending on your answer, you need to justify the answer, right? So, which means that you're not just expected to answer yes or no, because that's not interesting. You want to know how you think. The hint to this problem is to calculate Reynolds number of the fish in both media and refer to the question of reciprocal motion that is described in the paper by percent on life at low Reynolds numbers. So in a sense, I'm asking you to do two, three things. I'm asking you to do your calculation. I'm asking you to read. I'm asking you to understand. And I'm asking you to arrive at an answer for an experiment that you can actually do if you have such a toy fish. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about this. So some of the constants that you will need for this are viscosity, which for water is one centipoise and for honey is 3000 centipoise. You remember we discussed this during one of the earlier tutorial examples of viscosity as measured using the ball drop viscometer. And so we're using that number 3000 centipoise. And for density, we are using 1000 kg per meter. And the density of honey is 1420 kg per meter cube. So you need to substitute these values into the equation for Reynolds number. In the case of water and in the case of honey. Once you have done that, you will get an answer which tells you what the Reynolds number of the fish in the two media are. You will also need a typical length scale, which I have not given you. So I ask you to take a value for typical length of a typical fish to be L is equal to. Now you can imagine fish come in all sizes, right? From very large, um, 10 to 50 meters to very small. So we'll take an average size that is approximately six centimeters or let us say 10 centimeters. You can find 10 centimeter fish in the fish market. So that is why. You will also need the velocity, but I have already provided it to you. And it is V is equal to one centimeter per second. 
please recall that these values are not in SI units. You will need to convert them. This is also not in SI units. This is in SI units. So with this in hand, I think you should be able to solve the problem. And the hint number two is that you need to use reciprocal motion. And the answer, in fact, is a no, by the way. The fish cannot move in honey. But you need to understand why. So justify. Yes. Okay. The next question relates to centrifugation and sedimentation. So the question is as follows. We've been talking a lot about blood and centrifugation. So imagine that hemoglobin protein has been isolated and you are centrifuging it. Now hemoglobin can be assumed to be a globular protein. It's not a wrong assumption. That is in its name, globin. The sol solvent in which it is suspended is water. And we are centrifuging it with acceleration due to centrifugation given by some factor of g here we are stating it is 10 to the power 5 which is 1 lakh g yeah that is 100,000 which is 0.1 million or 1 lakh Now, G over here stands for gravitational acceleration of Earth. As you all know, the value of G is 9.8 meters per second square. So, in other words, the centrifugation acceleration is 9.8 to 10 to the power 5, approximately 10 to the power 6 G. Now, 6 meters square per second, meters per second square. Sorry. But this is something you can precisely write down. So, you know the answer by just taking the product of 10 to the power 5 and 9.8 meters per second square. So I misspoke earlier. I must emphasize units of acceleration of meters per second square. Protein has to have some density because you probably recall you will need the density difference between the fluid and the solid that is being centrifuged. And the density of protein is 1.2 grams per cm cube. What is the density of water? 1 gram per cc, as we say usually. So it's 1 gram per centimeter cube. Think about this question. The hint is, of course, that you need to use the equation of the velocity of centrifugation. Okay. So presumably you have managed to do the substitution and converting units to SI, you have managed to get an answer. Okay. The last question relates to ocean science and something called phytoplankton. So you will find that the air-sea exchange of gases, biogeochemistry, the planetary food web depends strongly on something called phytoplankton. And in this particular paper, you see the Indian Ocean and the uh, detailed geochemistry of air sea interactions. But we are going to focus on something called phytoplankton, which stands for phytos plant plankton made to wander or drift. They are microscopic organisms. They live in both salt and fresh water. And they come in very diverse forms. So from the left to right, you're looking at cyanobacteria, which sometimes are called blue-green algae diatoms diatomaceous earth is something you may have heard of um, if you look at the components of your toothpaste you will find diatoms in it yes toothpaste colgate dinoflagellates green algae and coxolithophores now the coxolithophores are calciferous deposited organisms calcium deposited organisms Whereas cyanobacteria are chlorophyll-containing organisms, all of them are single cells. Some of them do have some colonial forms. Now, when you look at satellite images, you will find that phytoplanktons 
can form huge carpets like a bacterial colony plate except at a planetary scale tens of kilometers so this scale is 50 kilometers yeah scale bar please note and the blue color over here is explosive growth that was observed in the space of only 14 days between 11th october and 25th october 2009 these images are from nasa the website is earth observatory nasa the location of this photograph is from new zealand now the phytoplankton form an important part of the food web as i mentioned earlier and whales which are mammals of the sea eat huge amounts of them so but not just whales even small fish graze on these this is the lowest trophic pyramid trophic level in the py food pyramid in the oceans so the health of phytoplankton is very important for ecology and for the carbon cycle indeed this aquatic food web illustrates to you the interactions between nanozooplankton microzooplankton phytoplankton and overall phytoplankton combining to be fed by krill which are small fish small crustaceans small fish and squids which are in turn eaten by seals and penguins which are in turn eaten by larger fish and eventually also baleen whales eat directly the phytoplankton their study requires sampling of the oceans and uh, also satellite photography of chlorophyll content and for the moment i will leave you with this idea that there's more to read and ask you a simple question what is the size of a coxolithophore in terms of length scale and mass you need to find the length and the mass of a coxolithophore in order to do this you will need to perform calculate the mass of a cell making reasonable assumptions about its shape now if you recall i had mentioned in the earlier lectures also that a physics approach means that we simplify so coxo litho pores can be considered to be spherical in shape the mass therefore is equal to the density multiplied by the volume since density is mass per unit volume we basically get the mass of the coxolithophore for which you need to get the volume and for volume we say we calculate the volume of a sphere for that the characteristic number you need to know is the radius this you will capture from the images on the internet please provide url of the link used remember you will find all kinds of references try to find academic or isro or nasa references not any other so think about this how you will go about finding the size of each individual coxolithophore single cell in terms of its length and in terms of its mass with that i end this section <laughs>